Hey, how are you everyone? Can you see this? These are icicles made in geometry script. Straight in Unreal. Take a look. I click frozen for performance. Move the pivot. Unfreeze it. And bam, here they are. Fitting the new location. Just like this. And what does it do um, in practice? It takes the mesh, mesh is picked right here. For performance, I selected a single one. So let's say if I move it to that one, click it, they will disappear. But now I move my pivot. Uh, wait a second, and here we go. Now they spawn right there. So they are cones, cones with pearly noise on top, then um, remeshed, voxelized. There are some problems like floating pieces right here. I haven't dealt with them. So on today's stream, we'll try to recreate this from the scratch. By the way, nice to see 14 people here already. And the second thing, this is a birthday stream because today is my birthday. Two to the fifth, so 32. Okay. Should we start from scratch? I think so. So what is geometry script? How did I do this? This is not construction script. Plugins, geometry, script, right here. It says experimental. It's quite unstable but it's already quite mature as well when it comes to functionality, it's super powerful. Don't be fooled by the version uh, 0.1. So enable that, restart your engine. Now, can you use geometry script in runtime? You can. This is the big advantage over Houdini, for example. You can use it in a game, game code that's shipped to client. But should you use it in runtime? It depends because look how much time it takes to, to create these. I move it, and there's like almost two seconds of uh, freeze. However, there's a reason for that, because we generate new mesh from scratch by, let's say, tracing or remeshing the original mesh, deleting polygons from them, remeshing the whole thing, voxelizing that, and cleaning up the, the wireframe. Here's the wireframe, it's adaptive. I don't know if it's visible at all. Probably not. Aha, uh -huh, because it doesn't highlight. Anyway, it's adaptive a bit. So that's a, quite a lot of work, and you want to be doing this in your game. But simpler stuff, like cutting things, simple boolean, sure you can, and the less vertices, less primitives, the better. Chat says happy birthday, thank you. Thanks a lot. That's a round birthday, that's true. Okay, thanks. So we enabled geometry script in the settings plugin. So now, how to start from scratch? This is not construction script. This is something else, a replacement, let's say. We won't use construction script at all. So let's go right there. Let's create bl blueprint class. And the first thing you should do is to look for one of the two things. If you want to make it in a game, like in runtime, search for dynamic mesh. Oh, I think this one. But if you want a better option that's better suited for static content that's on editor and can be cooked and so on, and even converted to nanite, go for generated dynamic mesh actor. So you start with that class as a parent. Select this, bp, geoscript, icicles, script. Okay. Let's drag and drop it into the level. Of course, nothing is there, not even this uh, dinosaur icon, zero. So double click that. And now, as you can see, or you can see, parent class, generated dynamic mesh actor, 
gives, an, gives us access to some special functions. You go to functions here on the left, override. You can override uh, the parents' uh, functions. And we override uh, something you can see, of course. Um, you over. Oh, God damn it. How to show it to you? Anyway, believe me, you override on rebuild generated mesh. Like this. On rebuild generated mesh. This things we delete. Not need. This thing is like your typical construction script. So anytime something significant changes, Unreal wants to rebuild your dynamic mesh. You can stop that behavior by clicking frozen. This frozen checkbox appears for dynamic mesh actors and it means don't recalculate until I uh, toggle that again. Okay. Now another thing, when you work in geometry script is unstable as hell right now as of 5.1. That's one thing. Another thing is you should be using at least 5.1 because a lot of functions were added in this one and many more improved. So 5.0 is something else. This is the real geometry script that you want to use. Okay, so use 5.1. Now, when I mention stability, first always save, then compile. Remember, save and then compile. Don't compile first because it crashes, it's awful, and you don't want to risk saving your work. Second thing, editor preferences, auto save, enable. Okay, five minutes or less. Right, so we want to achieve this. Where do we start? What can this geometry script do? First, um, hydration. Lego mi jest wszystkiego najlepszego. Bardzo dziękuję. OK. So what's, it, what's this? What's target mesh? Target mesh is the dynamic mesh that was reserved for this actor. There's single one in this components. One component is one mesh. So how do we create many meshes? There are two ways. Either you just add uh, append, append box. Then you don't need to create a new mesh. You just add a box to that single mesh. And then you can continue. So you added the box and then you add a sphere. Sorry, append a sphere. Sphere box? Maybe a sphere box. And six steps, center. Here's a transform. So we're gonna split this. Then transform location by 100 in X. Right? Let's see what happens. I just added these two things append box, append sphere box. Save, then compile. Let's go here. Here it is a box and a sphere. What about material? We are missing a material, right? So either you set it on this mesh on this component, like just this, that material, about material list. And here's a material list because you may, may set many materials, mm, you know, typically like chunks. But there's an easier way, not programmatic. You just click here on the component, select your material right there. Save, compile. And voila, here it is. So as you can see, generated dynamic mesh. Now I move it in super fast because nothing changes. Nothing is dependent here on any position or something, right? So what if we made the dimensions slightly random or rather dependent on position? Just to see you, show you the possibilities because this is something I can make by hand, right? I don't need proceduralism. Let's go back here and let's do this. Um, split the transform. And the transform scale will be, I will take this component's word position, word transform, sorry, word location, like this. I'm gonna take the 
z and calculate multiply it by some frequency i don't know zero zero two whatever and i'm going to calculate the sine sine radians out of this and i'm going to remap this map range clamped from minus one to one this, this is what sign returns to scale from half or from one to two and put it as my scale like that so what have i done here um let me draw this so I'm taking Z, right? Right here. So I want you, I want this uh, cube to react to its Z location by making the scale bigger, smaller, bigger, smaller, like this. Just to show you that geometry script is actually procedural, right? As I move the object. So here's my cube. I will be moving the cube and it should scale bigger, smaller in repetition. Okay? So this goes to scale. Save, compile. Go back here. I'm gonna move this. Can you see it? And this thing is generated every frame, every frame I move it from scratch in geometry script. This is not scaling the component, this is changing the actual mesh. Right. Um, and if I show you wireframe, here it is. Creates actual mesh every frame. So maybe here on the simple example it's not uh, felt enough, but it's extremely fast. It's extremely fast especially when you make your oper operations simple enough. Now, I appended box, I appended sphere box, but these are separate geos. In wireframe, you can see them cutting through, right? One cutting through another. It's two separate meshes, actually. Um, so what if I did something like... Uh, apply mesh, how was it called? Aha, uh -huh. and how do you search? You have to type geoscript. Type geoscript and then things appear. Because typically it's hard to find them, but you can also go geometry script, and here you are. Everything's there. Mm. So I want to join these two primitives. I am gonna make a boolean. Boolean. Apply mesh self union. Like this. Options. Fill hole. Simplify. Okay, and there's some threshold of tolerance. Let's try. Save, compile. Can you see it? Now the mesh is actually combined. There are new triangles added, like so. So Geometry Script is like your typical 3D software. It has most of the basic functions of 3D software modeling, uh, 3D modeling software. So these are now actually combined without the thing in the inside. So what does it mean? It means that now I can apply, for example, some smoothness. So target mesh, geoscript, as I said, and then smooth. Apply iterative smoothing. Now be careful, because in options, typically there's a lot of iterations. Let's try five. Save, compile. Here we go. It actually smoothed the thing. It smoothed the connection, right? I'm going to add some more uh, divisions to the cube first. So here's my box. And steps will be 5, 5, and 5. Save it, compile it. Here we go. It's already better. It applied 5 smoothing iterations. Mm, now I'm going to recalculate normals. Recal or GeoScript normals. Mm. Recompute normals. Okay. Here we go. Nice proper normals. And now take a look. I'm gonna move this mesh. 
So did I say it's super fast? It's just impressive. It's impossibly fast for, for something like that in Blueprint. Now let's make the radius bigger, like so, and take a look. The mesh, the actual mesh, recreated as I move it. So let's check frames per second, start unit, start unit, start, come on, start FPS, 120 FPS, <laughs> 115, again 120. <laughs> that costs almost zero, okay, for that thing. So if you have simple enough cases, you can do a lot even in the game itself. It's remeshing the stuff, it's smoothing the stuff, it's boolean. Boolean is applied. So yeah. Um, Legomi says um, that blueprint would be confusing if things get really big, because this is just a simple example. What happens if I want to make a game like Town, Scra Town Scraper? The thing is, Geometry Scripts in its entirety is exposed to C++. So you can write your actual functions. You can even make your own nodes by making a Blueprint function library in C++. So yeah, uh, both options are, are fine. Either this for simplicity at the beginning and then C++ for manageability later. Okay, I'm gonna remove the stat unit. So this is what we have here. Now, how to operate on other meshes, like this one. Short hydration break, and here we go. Legomi says it sounds good. Yeah, it's quite flexible in terms uh, of choice between C++ and Blueprint. Jatadeeb on Discord asks, what are we looking in terms of advantages versus using Houdini Engine aside from some computation speed and saving the cost of Houdini license? Um, so what do you gain? First thing that you gain is that you have access to every Unreal function, right? Let's say I have this environment. What I have to do in Houdini Engine would be to transfer all of this to Houdini Engine and make it start at the beginning. It takes some time. When I have heavy meshes, like nanite meshes for this, it would be really uh, expensive to bring them to Houdini. Of course, I can make a, put a cache in front of it. I can start, you know, storing these meshes in BG or somewhere. That's not the point. The point is, you want to make something artist friendly. You just want them to drag and drop this and just make it work instantly. As for uh, saving some speed, no, you save a ton of speed. Take a look. Just take a look. It's... Come on, you know, transferring that mesh back from Houdini every frame would be impossible. So, it makes iteration much faster because artists just drag the mesh, just places them somewhere and it reacts. Okay, so now about this advantage of having it in Unreal. Um, let's try this. I want these things to be moved to the nearest surface down. So trace line, trace line by channel, visibility, ignore self, of course. Start will be my components uh, word transform, uh, word location, that's my start. And end will be the same thing, plus minus uh, 10,000, okay? So I'm first doing a trace to find something, uh, you know, down for one frame, mm, so to find the surface. And when I have a hit, so branch, when I have a hit, I want to get break it result. Sorry, rather if it's a blocking hit, I want to get location and add this. Okay, so location, yeah. 
location of the impact, I want to transform these things like this. Okay, so only if it's true, only if I hit something. Let's try. Yeah, so here's the testing the hit. Like so. But why is this not snapping? Um, wait, when it's true, it should transform location. Okay, because it's not word. So I should, uh, again, sorry, get this dynamic thing, get word transform, invert, inverse transform location, this location, and only then put it here because it's relative. Let's try now. Oh. Now it went to the floor. Actually, why? It's always on the floor? Ah, like zero. I don't quite get why. But I hope it will snap here. Trace complex. All right. I didn't have physics. All right. So take a look. It's now following this. So, what have I done here? I, I took a very basic Unreal function that's even not geometry script, it's any function. It can be, you know, MIDI wave, or can be field, sound wave, synth, whatever. A particle system, right? I'm going to use whatever notes I like because it's full blueprint. It's not some fake, you know, cutout blueprint. It's the full thing. So I trace using typical trace function. I take my inverse location and put it here. So now I made this mesh actually follow, actually follow the geometry in like, you know, half a minute. So that's why uh, you already have more functionality than Houdini. But of course you also have less functionality than Houdini because Houdini has been developed for almost over two decades and it's super powerful when it comes to remeshing, uh, VDB, uh, attributes that you can, for example, scatter stuff using some attribute on the mesh. So Houdini is insane. Of course it has Velum, which is like a, a cloth engine. Yeah. Lego misses 25 years Houdini itself and around 30, if you counted Prism, the first attempt. Uh, so yeah, but you gain this full library of Unreal, including plugins like Synesthesia, for example, from audio. So if you've seen my tutorial, oh, it's already older than this. No, it's here. Uh, audio visualization. It's about Synesthesia plugin uh, that allows you to analyze waveforms. So for example, combine this. Here you have my previous stream, which you can find either on techardate.com or if you want files, you can get, uh, you can be a patron. And then here you go and making a cable tool. So take a look, this is similar. This is a cable. And I move spline in Unreal and I get instant feedback. No delayed feedback by like, you know, half a second or five seconds. It's immediate feedback like this, and the full mesh is recreated. This is the full thing. In Houdini, I would have to make some low poly version first and only allow you to cook the thing later. Here is super interactive. So if you want to get files from this and from today's stream, uh, on Patreon, you can get either the second thing or the third thing, and then you get uh, project files. So Take a look, how responsive. Um, and Jadlib also says, the only deterrent for me going full GeoScript is that I always end up spending much less time doing things in Houdini than working directly in Unreal. And that's true, unfortunately. These things, this looks simple. 
it's quite simple to apply iterative smoothing and so on. However, this is still very low level compared to Houdini. In Houdini, in Houdini you have super powerful functions, like measure. Measure tells you, for example, the curve, about the curvature of the mesh. Measure tells you the area of primitives and the thing that you should never underestimate is the amount of tutorials for Houdini. Lightfx.com slash learn and there is a ton of this including even game tools. So if you want to make this in Houdini you just watch this tutorial and you kind of have it. If you want to make it in geometry script you have to be pretty well versed in other procedural software to know what are you doing. Simple stuff like mine today? No. But buildings? Uh, yeah. And then later you uh, hit some performance problems. So you have to do stuff like GeoScript, um, for example, for example, how is it called? Not KD3, but BVH. Build BVH for mesh and so on. Optimization structures. However, Epic tries to make geometry script really easy, on the other hand. So, you have stuff like GeoScript, repair, remove small components, remove hidden triangles, compact mesh. So, it depends, you know, I'd rather recommend not skipping Houdini, learn it, especially, as I said, ton of good tutorials. And Tagma, com, I guess. Yeah, beautiful things just beautiful so don't skip on it but then know that you have this tool if you make uh, want to make tools uh, for your artist directly and the last thing about geometry script the big advantage you can make a plugin for marketplace because you don't need a Houdini license it doesn't matter if the big studio buys it or a small indie team Legomi is right that Houdini also has a cleanup function, just a single node. So yeah, Houdini is powerful, but if you want to make plugins for Marketplace or for the entire studio without paying or just for the speed of it or for real-time capabilities for your game, just go with GeoScript. Okay? So don't make... <laughs> don't go either for one or the other. Right, we have this funny thing. So let's delete this funny thing. I already showed you how to interact with the scene through Raycast. Now let's interact truly by being more aware of the environment. Let's say uh, there was something I like line trace by object or no? By pro line trace for objects. Object types. No. Line trace by profile? Nah. I thought there'd be some line trace for group of meshes, but apparently no. Okay, let's do something else. Uh, let's take this roof. Let's take just a part of it and extrude it, okay? And then smooth it out. How do we do it? Variables right here. Um, static mesh actor or anything else. But for now, I will just stay with static mesh actors. Mm. Make it an array type, like so. And then meshes, or no, actors to process, or maybe input actors. Okay, input actors. Save compile. I'm gonna delete all this. I don't need it. Input actors for each input actor. Let's do this. Now, here's single mesh. The result is a single mesh. So how do we proceed with many operations? Well, we do allocate compute mesh like this. Now I'm gonna make an uh, make it all into a function for uh, local variables. So function 
Mm. Process. Okay. Like this, I will add a single input, which will be dynamic mesh. Not actor, just dynamic mesh. So then dynamic mesh. And now for each input actor, first allocate compute mesh. Now let's make it a sequence. Allocate compute mesh. Local variables. Uh, okay. Uh, dynamic mesh again. Like so. And this will be the dynamic mesh current. Okay. Single thing. Right. Now allocate the compute mesh and setting this right here. So we have the you know the memory of it. Mm. And what I wanted to do, uh -huh, for each actor, I want to take up facing polygons, for example. Let's draw it. So let's say I would like to take the up facing polys. Whoa, sorry. I may be a different color, by the way. Like so. So only up facing, nothing, you know, on the edge. Not here. And I want to um, extrude them. Like this. Okay. So I want to extrude them. And then maybe smooth them out or something. Just as a test. So let's go back here. Allocate compute mesh. And then for the current input. Um, what was it called? Add mesh from static mesh actor. Let's check. Dynamic mesh current. Add mesh. No. Mesh from static. Yeah. Copy mesh from static mesh. Now from static mesh asset. It will be this one. Mesh actor object reference. Ah, it's asset. Uh, so I think I have to get static mesh component. Component. And from this, I want to get mesh. Yeah. Like so. To dynamic mesh, this one that we just created, this temporary one. So compute mesh are uh, compute meshes are temporary meshes that we just do operations on, and then we save to this final dynamic mesh. Okay. So first thing, I allocate this. I copy mesh from the actor, from the input, mm, request the LD maximum and so on, There's, there are some options. And then when I'm done, done with this, I want to delete everything that's not up facing. So I take my dynamic mesh current, I'm gonna do wait, GeoScript mesh selection select mesh elements by normal angle there's also in box in sphere so let's do by normal angle like so normal facing up maximum degree 20 section types triangles vertices or poly polygroups let's go with triangles here's my selection Okay, um, so let's save it into a uh, selection selected triangles current. Okay, 
And let's see if this selected correctly. So dynamic mesh current, extrude, apply, append symbol extrude polygon, apply mesh extrude, linear extrusion. Sounds good. And there's a selection. Many nodes have it. If they don't, you will have to cut the mesh by selection. So you would have to delete selected triangles from mesh. But many uh, of them already have it, so we don't need to. But actually, we may want to do this, not to have a uh, spam <laughs> in our mesh. Unnecessary things. So, dynamic mesh current. This would be an inverted selection. So, non selected trees. Or actually, selected triangles current. It's inverted selection. And I will do delete selected triangles from mesh. Just like this. So, selection will be my selected triangles current. Defer change notification means if it should refresh instantly or not. Defer means uh, don't refresh. Okay, and apply extrusion. But first let's check without this, if it deletes them as it should. Mm. Or even, even before that, I'm gonna just show you copy mesh from static mesh. I'm gonna disconnect these for now. Just to show you copy mesh from static mesh from every actor. Okay. So again, we have this input actors. So I'm gonna go to input actors plus and pick this one. Nothing happens, right? Or doesn't it? Um wait, I selected my actor. Going to go here. Aha, uh -huh. because I allocated, allocated compute mesh, I copied this mesh from static mesh, but I haven't actually um, written it back into the main mesh. So in my event graph, I have on repeat generated mesh. There's my process function. Target mesh goes here, exec goes here. And inside the process, uh, upon completed, to dynamic mesh, add mesh, sorry, append mesh, append mesh, like so, and this dynamic mesh current. Okay, save it, compile it, here we go. Okay, so as you can see, I picked one of those. And I have it copied to my mesh, but with the original transform. It's relative to the dynamic mesh uh, component. When I pick something else, let's say, uh, let's say, go to content, sphere, this. If I'm gonna take this instead, here we go, right? No matter of the original transform. But what if I wanted to copy the originals uh, transform. Well, here I have copy mesh or static mesh. Was it in the options? Uh, no. So I would have to, I would have to take, take this meshes transform so again, sorry. Uh, here I have the this thing. Static mesh component, static mesh. I want to get where transform of this component. Do I append it? Um, I think not exactly, because I have to first remove my own uh, transform. But wait, I get this, which is cool. 
but I also have my dynamic meshes transform. Get transform. Get words transform. Okay. And how do I do this? I don't remember. Uh, do I get inverted? And then combine? It's always a trick. Uh, <laughs> compose transforms. But I'm not sure if I'm doing it correctly. Let's see. Yes. <laughs> so I get the transform of the component. I'm actually surprised it worked. Of the actor that's my input. I invert my local to word of the current dynamic mesh component. So it's now uh, words to local. I combine these two. And in the end, I have my dynamic mesh overlapping the original. But as you can see, it reacts when I move uh, the dynamic mesh. It doesn't react when I move the original mesh, which is kind of fair because it can't track every actor in the world. It can only track itself. Okay, uh, so here we go. And that's the append mesh. Append mesh. Okay, I copied mesh from static mesh. Now I'm gonna show you that I... Ah, but to not have this ugly effect, I will take this dynamic mesh and do inflation a little. So push. No inflate. No. Um, ah. Wait a second. Geometry script. Mesh edits. No. Modeling. Apply mesh offset. Okay. Apply mesh offset. Options. Distance one centimeter. Let's try. Yeah, now it's cool. Now it's cool. So it tracks these actors. Now can it track two actors? Let's add another input. This one. As you can see, apparently yes. But now it replaced this original thing. Uh, the test sphere by this. Yeah. So it now tracks one object. How is it possible? Wait a second. Um, for each input actor, append mesh to the dynamic mesh. And in theory, it should be fine. I think. Append dynamic mesh current. Yeah. Aha, when the loop is completed, sorry. Uh, it should be here. Let's try. Yeah, now it tracks two objects. Like uh, the third one, just like this. Okay. Okay, thank you, Adel. Uh, that was this. Adel says that he stopped using a sequence node because it's not waiting for the previous outputs to finish. Really? It's not? I know one thing that when you have these limits, like for example, uh, size of the stack, uh, other memory-related memory things, then sequence behaves very badly. But I, do you think it's not sequential? Really? It should wait. Okay, so we are not tracking two meshes. Let's try attaching these nodes. So select mesh elements by normal angle, like this. And delete them, like this. Hmm. 
Okay, now that got got pretty complicated. I'm gonna make some comments in a second. Okay. Let's see. Save compile. Here. So apparently deleted things that are not top facing. Let's do a bigger uh, tolerance. Max angle degrees uh, 80. Here we go. So take a look. I move this. Nothing changes because it moves these things into word space. But it actually deletes anything that's not facing up. And when I add um, another actor, it should behave the same, right? So delete. Okay. Now let's let's try extrusion. So whatever's left after deletion, let's extrude. Before. Apply mesh linear extrude faces. Options. Oops, sorry. Didn't want to. No. Distance uh, 10 centimeters. Direction up. Here we go. So, as you can see, we already have a prototype snow cover. Now we want to push that more because we. So maybe average face normal instead. It's similar. So as you can see, the extrusion, it really works like so. Let's go 10 centimeters again. Or maybe 5 centimeters. But let's move this offset here. Target mesh, offset distance 5 centimeters. Here we go. So that's a pretty nice snow cover for you. And now look, if I rotate the original mesh. I move this a little. It's... Oh, but the normals didn't rotate. That's bad. Okay, so... So I should actually make the, the transform earlier. So instead of getting it here... Right here... I should... Convert it to word space here. So I have static mesh. And this dynamic mesh should be transform mesh. Yes. And the transform will be the static meshes get word transform. Huh. Sorry, mesh component. Get word transform. moves it to word. Let's try. Now it's correct. That's really the upward facing normal, independent of the input's rotation. Okay. So we have a snow cover in GeoScript. Um, hydration time. Okay, I get what you mean, let go me. That sequence can be sequential, but doesn't mean it's blocking, okay. Judd Deep says on Discord, I can only see myself working in depth with geometry script if I were to go full crazy mode and make a Big blue pin library of useful functions, basically recreating Houdini nodes. I think that's a sensible approach, like why not, right? Mm, the same with shaders, like 
people make their own material functions and they use it. Same like SDFs or added one real. It's like needed time. People need to invent these things and to actually implement them. It can be even trivial, but it doesn't mean it's in instantaneous, right? Someone has to put in the work. So sure, make a blueprint library, even sell it on the marketplace. Okay, so we have our snow. Now the snow is, um, it has the same tessellation as the original, which is okay for the sphere. But if I had the cube, um, where is cube? Some cube. Is this a simple cube? Is it simple enough? Yeah. Let's add this actor. Okay. Huh. It's weird. As you can see, not good enough. But actually, why is it so? Why does it make it smaller? Cube chamfer? Uh, okay, better. <laughs> but what's the actual wireframe? It's like this. Okay. So as you can see, not enough vertices to do some interesting stuff on it. So now remesh and to make it quite slower, actually. Um, we go here. Append this mesh, sure. And after we append everything, upon completion, we're gonna take dynamic mesh, uh, sorry, the main dynamic mesh, remesh, apply uniform remesh. Let's save, let's compile. Remesh options. Uh, nope, sorry, uh, uniform options. Triangle count or edge length. I prefer edge length. One centimeter, no, no, no. Let's start with 10. Compile. Here we go. And here we are. The mesh is now tessellated. So again, let me show you without it. It's like this. And now with. It's like that. Let's remesh even more. So uh, six centimeters. Okay. However, this method gets risky if your mesh gets big. Because this was quite fast. Not super fast, as you can see, it takes one second or something, it's a heavy operation. The problem is, if you make this cube insanely big, and now move your dynamic mesh actor, it's slow, and it's a lot of triangles. So, you have the triangle count instead, if you prefer. Triangle count, okay. And now it's fixed. Of course, the other problem is, um, when the cube becomes smaller, the triangle density gets higher. Like so. But still, it's safer. It's way safer to use it. Here is some funny remesh artifact. <laughs> but yeah, and now when we have that remeshed, we can apply funny stuff. Like, for example... Um, Perlin. Apply Perlin noise to match. Uh, base layer. Magnitude 15 centimeters. Okay. Here we go. We don't have enough polygons to make it nice. So let's go back to remesh and 15,000 triangles. Okay. Here we go. Maybe 30,000. Okay. Now frequency could be uh, lower. Maybe slightly higher. Okay. So as you can see, parallel noise applied. Now about the normals, they don't seem right. So, but that's intentional. Geometry script doesn't want to waste your time recomputing normals after every operation. You have to do it yourself. Recompute normals. Okay. 
No, it's nice. Take a look. Take a look at this. So here is some snow generated in Blueprint. So let's go again for the graph, but let me check the chat first. Uh, Ragomi says I should apply some smoothing. Um, okay. Uh, did, did I have smoothing here? No. Okay, so before recomputing normals, actually, I'm gonna do iterative smoothing to mesh. Just, you know, smaller alpha, alpha meaning strength, and fewer operations. And then recompute normals. Better. Okay. There's this hard edge. I wonder why. Hmm. Whatever. Remesh options. Discard attributes. Yeah, discard them. Reproject. I don't know. Smoothing. Mixed. Uniform. I don't need UVs at all. I love splits. Yes. Remesh iterations. Let's make it faster. 10. Okay, twenty, uh, 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 <laughs> or maybe reproject is needed. Yeah, then iterations, but reproject should be faster now. Let's try. It's not bad. It's fine. Okay, so we have that snow. Let's make the amplitude weaker, ten centimeters. Like this. Uh, right. So let's go uh, through this uh, through this graph again. Or actually, and let's clean this up a little. Do. Okay, so first thing will be... Allocate a temporary dynamic mesh to work on. Copy the geometry from the static mesh actor in word space. Then we have this. Select the geometry. Take the triangles that don't point upwards. And uh, delete them. So that's that. Now we have extrude the remaining geometry upwards. Inflate it slightly by normal. Okay. And let's make this called, uh, let's make it a variable for the user. And let's call it snow thickness centimeters. And I'm going to use it here as well. No thickness centimeters. Okay. Now what's this? Uh huh. This is like so. Ok. 
command append the result to the main dynamic mesh. And here for like everything, after everything is done, is apply post processes to the final result. Okay. Whoa, that's a lot. Okay. Can I just recombine and just make these upgrades? Yeah, I can. So I want to show only specified ones. Um, I want to show only the these cut attributes. Yes. Smoothing type uh, uniform. I don't need UVs. Smoothing rate was the number? No. Uh, remesh iterations. Uh, just eight. And that's it. Like so. Okay, and we're good. So is it clear for everyone in the chat? Legomi says that you can use geometry script to pre-process meshes and then send them to Houdini when you do heavy operations. That's a very cool idea. I haven't thought about that, but that's true. Houdini has blueprint API. You just call Houdini API node and do stuff like load uh, HDA, compute cook HDA. So yeah, using this to create initial data for Houdini can be amazing actually. So look, it's not, it's not that uh, slow. And now I have my snow thickness exposed. Let's do 15 centimeters. Quite fast. It's really fast. So yeah, here we have the snow. Let's rename the blueprint. Uh, let's find it right here and rename it to blueprint. Oh, sorry. BPGO scripts. No. Okay. By the way, the folder in the project files is 22.11 GeoScript tests. Oh, Emmanuel asked about something. Can I use a height map? to get a better result. You mean a height map of the map, Emanuela, instead of getting um, the meshes themselves? Or do you rather mean um, for displacement, like a proper texture instead of Perlin noise? Instead of the Perlin noise, okay. Yeah, sure. Um, I don't have a nice height map, so I won't do that. But you just go here and do this place from texture map. Select the texture and the displacement will, will happen here. Simple as that. That's, that's everything, basically. Yo, Lighthouse. Hello. Yeah, so displacement doesn't have to be perlin noise. It can be by, by texture. I just don't have nice textures right now. Uh, you have to prepare the UVs first, so you have to do project uh, set mesh UVs from planar projection. So yeah, and then displace by texture. So we can try that on the next stream actually. Okay, hydration. So how do we like it so far? Do we have any questions, chat? Icicles will be now very simple compared to this. Uh, we have most of the stuff done. As it would be uh, similar. So, yeah.
So I'm gonna wait a second for your questions. In the meantime, I will, I will remind you about Patreon right here. If you want to get uh, these project files, all of that, then you either get the middle thing or the last thing, and you get access to to project files. And can meshes that are made by geometries could be movable components? Um, almost. If it's a dynamic generated mesh actor, if I have here, then not exactly. But when you create a blueprint class, search for dynamic mesh. This one is for static generation. That's very uh, editor only, but super fast. This one is just dynamic mesh. And then you can run all of this in game, but you don't have access to uh, on rebuild generated mesh. You have to call it yourself. So then you call you make this process function as we did here, but in case of dynamic mesh, you have to do it in event graph. So for example, someone I know on collision 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 event or something. Sorry, how is it called collision event? Uh, on begin overlap process like this and dynamic mesh will be then this get mesh like so so then you have to call it manually and then it works in game uh, for movable meshes but i inherited the dynamic mesh actor dynamic generated mesh actor so it's editor only but instead uh, like, thanks for this, it's very fast. Yeah, cool. All right, so we have snow. Now about the icicles. And by the way, since we have snow, um, let's check the wireframe, the density, and let's try similar density. Uh, gonna open this. And instead of triangle count, I will do edge length. So promote a variable. Uh, no. Snow mesh edge length. Centimeters. I was, uh, or rather, snow remesh edge length centimeters six by default let's start with uh, 15 let's see okay uh, not dense enough let's try 10 better okay so it may stay as 10 um, now input actors let's add some more Input actors, bam, like this. And please don't add the floor <laughs> due to the <laughs> remesh process. I would normally try it, but it will kill the stream. Let's try how much time it takes for this to, to regenerate. Let's change the thickness. Let's do start unit graph. Start unit graph. And snow thickness, six centimeters. Okay, about two, about two seconds, I think, even maybe less. Pretty nice. Centimeters, 40. Longer. Much longer. Because of the remesh, probably. Yeah, this was long. Okay, back to five. Now it's better. Uh, 
Uh, yo, that has wanted to make the stack that's suitable. Uh, sure. Yes, uh, it's possible. And uh, uh, Legumi asks, can I feel their meshes coming to the process? That's a great idea. Thank you. Let's do it. Uh, so here comes the mesh. And let's not process bigger than something. So that's a great idea. Thanks. Uh, mesh rejection. Mesh rejection max size. Or mesh rejection diagonal. Okay. And now let's do this mesh. Where is it? Damage component. No. Just mesh. Get word bounds. Get bounds. Get local bounce. Oh no. Come on. I don't want local bounce. I want global bounce. Get bounce. But it's collision. Or maybe. <laughs> um, box extend. How to get diagonal of a box extend? Box extend. Wait. Okay, maybe see radius actually. Uh, so diagonal will be sphere radius times two, I guess. No, not exactly. Or maybe. I don't know. Mm. So basically, if this radius is smaller than mesh rejection diagonal centimeter or reject actors bigger than centimeters. Then do nothing. Oops. Save and compile. Okay, everything disappeared. And now let's set this rejection thing to uh, 500 centimeters. Okay, something is here. So, uh, 1,000 centimeters. Better. Right. So now, even if I add accidentally add the floor, it should just ignore it. Yeah, it just skips it. Thanks, Legomi, for, the, uh, for that idea. Aha, uh -huh. I could get the maximum. Okay, I could just get the length. Right, so box extend length of that vector. Thanks. Does it still work? Apparently, yes.
Okay. Icicles. Here they are. I won't recreate them from scratch because it will be tedious, but I'll just show you how, the, uh, how they work. So let's go inside. Let's go inside the control E. <laughs> this graph is quite long, but it's not as complex. Let me draw something. So the snow works by taking up facing normals, right? The, the icicles do the opposite. First, they take the bottom facing normals of a given mesh, but only within the radius. Then I need to put cones, cones on that surface. But as of now, unfortunately, geometry script doesn't have the thing that Houdini has by default, which is a scatter node. Houdini could just, you know, you give them and give Houdini a surface. Sorry. And Houdini can get you, for example, you want three points. So Houdini can get you random three points on the surface, which would be perfect because I want to specify the number of cones and have it scatter the cones. I don't have this here yet. So I thought that I can just remesh the original thing into the number of vertices I need. So if I want to have three cones, I'm gonna just remesh this mesh into um, three vertices like this. And then in every vertex of the resulting low poly, I put a cone and remove the original, okay? That's the basic idea. So let's see. Let's see. First, again. Uh, allocate, or rather prepare, a temporary mesh to be worked on. Uh, then I initialize random numbers. Initialize a random, a stable a random number generator or a deterministic number generator. Later. Uh, save the transforms for later optimization whoops sorry I didn't mean to Here again, as previously, I copy the mesh. So, copy the mesh, copy the geometry from the static mesh actor. Okay. And what this was about? Ah, I got only the triangles within the radius. But there's a simple, simple, simpler method. I don't need all of that, actually. Because I, I created this manually. I just get face normal, make a dot product, something, something. Let's simplify this. This is the manual method. Let's just do mesh dynamic temp. Select by normal angle and then select, sorry again, and then select in here. Here I did this manually, so I checked if the triangle's position are within distance, if triangle something, something. I'm gonna just use this. So 
Select mesh elements by normal angle. Normal was minus one and normal dot threshold. Normal dot threshold was 0 0.6, which means like 40, 40 degrees. Normal minus one. Triangles, yes. Here, uh, sphere origin will be self location world. Ah, but I don't need this. No, I need local to world, self location world. Huh. Ah, because it's in world. Okay. So sphere origin will be self-location world. Sphere radius will be selection radius centimeters. Triangles again. And here I want to combine these two selections. So combine, mesh, selection. As you can see, it's pretty robust. Everything I think about that I need is here. Combine mode, intersection. So I want the overlap between these two groups. Okay. So first I do this, then I do that. And then I combine these selection sets. And I have a resulting selection, which I'm going to save. Save. Uh huh. I want to look at variable. Triangles. Facing down within radius and I don't need to convert index array into this because I already have it right here so what does it do copy mesh selection to mesh so only select the triangles facing down within radius okay I'm gonna delete all of that all of that actually. I don't longer need triangle ID selected. Good. So this part it will be make a selection of triangles which face down downward and fit within the defined sphere. Okay. Now here we have copy mesh, selection to mesh. Let's check if it still works, by the way. Because maybe it stopped working. Of course it stopped working, ah. Sure. When did it stop working actually? That's not good. Wait a second. Normal. Okay. Target mesh is missing. This one? I think so. Now it works. Okay. And it should be faster than the original because it's much less manual. Perfect. So this thing right here will be called copy only the selected triangles into our final map. Then here, um, apply mesh offset. So make mesh thicker. Extra thickness centimeters. Okay. 
Okay. And here in all this, what does it do? Uh huh. So here it will be create scattered points where the uh, icicle cones will be placed by decimating the original match to the desired point count. So I'm simplifying that mesh until it has number of points to scatter. Get all positions like this. And then I will have actually adding the cone. Um, so this thing will be append cones at positions. Okay. So simplify the mesh to get the, the points to scatter. Um, yeah. And then just create these cones. After we created the cones, um, apply post processes to cones like noise, moveness, moving. And then copy the mesh. Whoops, sorry. Copy the temporary mesh into the final one. That's it. And let's check them. Icicles are here. And the snow is there. Let's take these two. Let's move them uh, here. Let's move it a little. Right. And actually, let's add a dinosaur to it. Add billboard. Okay. Frozen. Yeah, click frozen to pause the calculations and then click it again. Here we go. Okay, so that's the result of today's stream. How do I take a high resolution screenshot of this? Oh, wait a second. I'm gonna rotate these like so. Make them bigger. And this one too. Perfect. Mm 
Let's rotate this one a little. Okay, cool. And new icicles. Just let me freeze it. Move them here. And pick it. Like so. Unfreeze. Uh huh. And this one again. Actors frozen. Add this one and add that one. And again. And again. Okay. This, let's make it bigger. So radius 400. All right. And that one unfreeze. Perfect. Here we are. Okay. By the way, where is the mist? Where is the fog? And viral? No, lighting. Go over there. Fog, fog, color. All right, much better. Can I make it? Actually, yes. Um. And now only the, the lighting of the bottom is quite dark. Uh, uh huh. I can use the same material, I suppose. Like so. Perfect. Uh, something's wrong with the fog. Give me a second. I don't like it too much. There's something dark about it. Ooh. It is dark. There's a bit of just... Oh, nice. That's cool. That's really cool. So now I'm missing... It's quite dark, right? Better? I don't think so. Oh, nice. But something's still dark here. Let's go to directional light. And let's try... Well, maybe. Maybe, yes, but I'm not sure. Um, density 0 0.4. Okay, that's cool. Still quite artificial. I think that's better. That color may be a little fake. Okay, that's why. Now it's good. Okay, here we go. Cool. Thank you for much so being. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Project files, patreoncom slash day and of course at some point, two weeks or so, it will also be posted on the public channel. Thanks, Emanuela. Thanks, Adel. Thanks, the Gomit for the ideas. Thanks, One Eye for cheering me up. Yo, Lighthouse for the dynamic uh, questions and Jad Deep. Uh, for 
the deep insight why you should and shouldn't use a geometry script. Thank you all. See ya.